after the uh, Jeremy King dunk. Uh, as we know, Cuba was leading by only six points with a minute and a half to go. And uh, what I'd like to know from you guys is what was your first reaction when Jerry got, Jeremy got the ball around half court when we did only have that six point lead? Uh, Andy Barnett, I'm going to start with you. Tell me uh, your thoughts during, the, during that, that whole uh, scene of events. When he first got the ball, I thought, oh no, <laughs> don't dunk it, man. I thought he was just going to blow it. And then when he did, he started dancing around. I was like, just calm down. No big thing. Uh, Pat, I, I don't know if you had a good view of it. Could you uh, tell me some of your opinions on the uh, the dunk? He looked stupid. <laughs> no, it was. He looked stupid. He overreacted. Well, how about leading up to the dunk? Did you feel confident that he was going to be able to put it down? No. I thought he was going to throw it off his leg and fall down and look stupid. Speaking now to senior Waylon Cherry, we're riding on the bus to St. Clair. Waylon, uh, I believe you're in the backcourt. The pass has just been thrown to half court. Uh, I'd like to give me a, your interpretation. Your interpretation of the events. Well, I was hoping that he wouldn't dunk it because of, he hardly ever makes them in practice. And if he would have missed it, it probably would have been a big momentum change and Steelville could have came back and won the game. And that's about it. That's, oh, well, I was I was happy for him when he dunked it, but I think he could have settled down a little bit. Transfer you through the pass and gave him the opportunity. You're, you yourself are an accomplished dunker. What do you think about the whole scenario? Oh, I was a little hesitant on throwing it to him because I really didn't think he'd be able to dunk it. But it's all right. I didn't think he overreacted any. You didn't think? You no. Yeah, you, you, yours was very similar. Yeah, it was. Well, um, once Jeremy got that ball, you know, I had confidence in him all the way. I think I was the only one out there that knew he was going to put that ball down. And just the afterwards thing, I don't know, he a little bit out of control. But I don't know what, I think he was trying to get a, in another fight or something, I don't know. Hughes, we call you Snowplow. I think you happened to be on the bench at the time. Could you tell me, did it, was there a good feeling among Coach Gunn and all those people on the bench? Did they, did they have a lot of confidence in Jeremy? No, not at all. All I heard was, no, don't do it. I have something else to say. In Jeremy's defense, I might have done the same thing if I would have dunked it too. So I didn't want him to get too mad at me. So I have to back him up a little bit on this situation. I'll talk to Mr. Wallace, and uh, we're going to go all the way back to that Sullivan game early in the year. End of the game, six seconds left. Uh, Mr. Wallace, take us through the uh, time out there. We set up the play for Mike Ransom in the first dunk in uh, 10 years. And in a minute, we'll talk to uh, Snowplow and explain why we call him that. Okay. Well, six seconds left. We're in one of the biggest games of our lives. Of course, it was our big rivalry, Sullivan. And Coach Gunn, the good coach he is, calls a timeout. We have the lead. We know we're going to win. And so, calls a timeout. He sits us all down, and he goes, Adam, all right, we're going to run a play for you to dunk. And me, being the um, unselfish guy I was, I said, Coach, I can't. My leg hurts. I said, why don't we just give it to Ransom this time? And so Coach said, all right. So he sets up the big play. We're going all the way full court length. And so he has Gary on one end. He has Gary and Mike down there at the very far end. And he has Gary, Snowplow. This is the reason we call him Snowplow. He sets the monster pick for Ransom as Ransom goes long, grabs the ball, and goes up for the dunk on top of Lattimore's head. And the rest was just um, put away in concealed books, and we're not allowed to talk about that. Uh, we're going to interview Snowplow in a second. I'd like to emphasize the fact that the timeout was called by Sullivan, but we took advantage of it to uh, call the play. And uh, Gary, you've been called Snowplow since that time. Do, do you like that name, and why exactly did he, they call you that? Oh, yeah, it's okay name. I don't think they would have called me that if I would only pick one person, but I picked four people. <laughs> so, and a cheerleader. <laughs> and a cheerleader. Just so Michael could dunk it. Uh, Gary, what I'd like you to do for a moment is uh, could you go back and reconstruct the events surrounding another highlight of the CHS season when you dribbled the length of the court and uh, the pump three. faked and stuck the three. <laughs> Uh, in one of our ball games, could you go back and uh, walk us through your thought processes from the point that you and uh, Brad Shelton passed the ball to each other 10, 15 times to the point that you dribbled down the, down the court? Well, Brad
Brad passed me the ball, but I didn't want to shoot it yet, so I passed it back. So he passed it back to me. I didn't want to shoot it, so I passed it back to him. And that went on about ten more times. So then they, like, shot and they missed. And, or we shot, we missed, and they brought the ball down. And then they shot, and they missed, and I got the rebound. I dribbled the ball all the way up the court. Switch jump hands. stop. No, I didn't switch in. Jump stop. Gave a pump fake and shot it, and that was all. <laughs> I'd like to go back. Uh, as a coach, I remember being a player. It wasn't that long ago, working on the old vertical, wanting to dunk the whole high school career. Only had one chance. We were down a point with 39 seconds to go in the bell game, and I chose not to, most likely out of fear of Coach Spurlock ripping my head off. So here I am now, come full circle, back as a coach, and the game is on the line, and Jeremy King gets the ball. And uh, my first thought was, Jeremy, if you dunk this ball, I'm going to rip your head off. Of course, uh, Jeremy was about three for 30 in dunk attempts in, in uh, his career. But uh, hey, he threw it down with authority. We won the basketball game, and uh, it'll be something he'll remember the rest of his life. So I'm very happy for him. But uh, what were the chances uh, that he would get it down? Something about a snowball in Haiti or something. I don't know. A little bit. Talk about some of our players. Waylon, I'd like for you to give me uh, your, some of your opinions on what it's like playing basketball and uh, tell us a little bit about this player. Uh, tell us about Andy Barnett. Well, what it's like to play basketball at Cuba High, it's an honor because not many people get a chance to do it here. And, you know, we come out and we work hard every day in practice. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about Andy Barnett, one of our great players who comes in off the bench. Andy is a player who I believe gives 100% every time he's on the court. And he works hard, he hits the glass hard, gets a lot of rebounds, does a lot of little things to help teams win. And I think next year he'll step up and be one of the leading scorers on the team, be one of the leading rebounders, and be a key player next year's team. And that's about all I have to say. OK, Adam, we've heard Waylon's interpretation. Tell us a little bit about Andy and uh, I don't know about uh, some of the stories like the other night when I was telling you about the uh, Steelville incident when Steelville, you know, let down a little bit because they knew some of our players were out. And Go ahead and tell us a little bit about that and how fun it is to play with Andy. Well, Andy, Andy's our main man. He's the guy that keeps us going off the court and on the court. But getting back to a little story, this is uh, before our big Steelville win where Jeremy King dunks the ball. Coach Gunn comes into the locker room, says, sits down, boys. He goes, I got a story to tell you. So he starts telling us a story about how when we were playing still the last time, one of their play or one of our players was hurt and we came and we they came out thinking they were just gonna blow us away because it was our star player ransom. And but we came out and blew, started blowing them away. And then they figured out that they needed to get things together. So he was trying to tell us, you know, that we need to get our minds on the game now because we're not gonna blow them away unless we really think we can. And, every, and he goes, does everybody know what town we're talking about? And we all go, yeah, Stillville, Stillville. And then about a second later, we hear Barnett in the back, Owensville, Owensville. <laughs> and Coach Gunn, he turns to Barnett and he goes, what? And Barnett goes, Stillville, 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 Stillville. Barnett's just uh, has a little trouble comprehending the fact at the time. But he always keeps us, uh, keep us, inter keeps us interested in basketball. and keeps it uh, entertaining. Mr. Barnett, you played basketball now with Trevor Brown for probably since fourth grade. Uh, we talked about you a little bit. Tell us what it's like playing with Trevor Brown. Any, anything interesting about Trevor Brown that uh, anyone else would like to know since you played a whole entire basketball season with him? Um, I really don't have too much to say about Trevor. What? Or anybody else? Uh, no. Hey, um, now we're, we're going to go back to here to the very beginning of our season before basketball started. For our practices, we had uh, Coach Gunn playing a little trip for us where we went down to Van Buren, which is down in the Boot Hills of Missouri, stayed on the Current River in a couple of cabins, and it was uh, just the varsity team. It's a really enjoyable, fun weekend, played a little hoops, got to know each other a little better. But during this period, we did, um, initiated our uh, junior players, which is a uh, Become a tradition now with the CHS basketball team, and uh, right now I'm gonna interview Andy Barnett, one of the initiates, and see what he thought about it. First of all, Andy, uh, did 
Did you enjoy the initiating routine? Not really. I didn't find it very pleasant running around <laughs> when it's about 30 degrees. All right, all right. <laughs> Let's not go into details here. Um, but do you, do you think uh, it is a, it's a nice routine to get, initiate the juniors coming up? And will you be initiating juniors coming up like that? I think, I, I think that it's a nice thing to get to know everybody and uh, show a little senior attitude or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I think I will be initiating the juniors next year. Do you think you uh, have become a uh, professional elephant dancer yet? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, talking to the most famous and um, great snowplow, Gary Hughes. Gary, what did you think about the initiation weekend? And uh, give us your little feelings on that. Oh, I didn't like it. Gary was, uh, let me say that Gary was our first uh, person who we took into the room. And I tell you what, I don't know. There's something coming out of his pants, but I can't tell you what. What? <laughs> well, first they ran me into the door, so I started swinging, so, you know. So he wouldn't do nothing to me. All right. Um, <laughs> miss most about playing basketball here at Cuba High School is just being around the guys, you know, hanging out, you know, being a team, you know, practicing together, coming out and working hard together, and just, you know, having fun, you know, just, I don't know really, just all kinds of things. I'm sitting here waiting on homecoming king, Michael Ransom. Tell us what it is he's going to miss most when the basketball season's over, if he misses it all. Could it be the attention? Could it be the socks to his knees, the women, the dunks, Coach Gunn? I don't know. He won't tell us. I think he's about to cry. It's a tearful moment. 